So when taking a look at this problem, you see absolute value, correct? Yes. No. Okay, great. Absolute value must be treated, that entire thing that says absolute value of 3x plus 5 must be treated as though it were a variable, meaning you have two operations that exist outside of those absolute value bars, correct? So the two operations, what are they? What's the most powerful one there? It's multiplication, yes? Does everybody see the two that's in front? So the two there that's in front of this absolute value bar right here is a multiplier. This, you see that six? See how there's that little thing right there? You know what that's called? That's a subtraction symbol. So six is separated away from the absolute value by a subtraction sign, yes? Now, does that subtraction sign go with the six? No. Okay, so that subtraction sign inevitably actually is attached to the two. two. Great. So can I go ahead and distribute that two? No. No, you cannot distribute that two. All right. So because it must be, it must be by the sake of absolute value, it must be looked at as its own individual variable. It's its own piece of information and you can't alter it. So I see time and time again, people keep on distributing it. You can't do that yet. I say yet, because there will be a time where I will teach you a property that will really feel like you can do it, okay? So, but anyhow, for now, we are gonna treat this strictly as a variable, which means you have a two-step problem because there are two numbers outside of the absolute value bar. A rookie would do what first? What would a rookie attempt to do here? Yeah, a rookie would attempt to do six minus two. We're not rookies. We're stepping, we're stepping out of rookie status. Okay, we're a step above rookie status, and now we're deciding what. What is the first thing I'm going to get rid of? You have an option between the six and the negative two. Which one has to go? The negative two would be the wrong one, right? It's going to be the six. So... Yes, we will do cases here. So I have to get rid of this six. So I'm going to get rid of it by subtracting six. Yes? Yeah. Great. I go to the other side and I do three minus six. Yes? Yeah. Awesome. I'm now left with this side canceling down to zero and the other side becomes what? Negative three. Negative three. Good. So now I'm left with the expression of negative two times the absolute value of three X plus five. And I'm claiming that that is equal to negative 3. Great. So at this point, I'm not done. And here is a mistake that a lot of people keep making. They get to this spot, and what do they do? Distribute. Yeah, well, they distribute or they do something else. Divide. They don't divide. That's actually the good thing to do here. Yeah. A lot of people see this negative 2 there, and they decide to do Add. plus 2. Yes? You can't. Remember, you are looking at the connection between the absolute value bar and the 2 in between them. So you're looking in the space in between them and there's nothing there, which inevitably means what? Multiplication. Multiplication. So the way you are gonna break this two away from this absolute value bar is through the property of division. Now, if you don't wanna use division, you can use this thing known as multiplying by the reciprocal. reciprocal. So in this case, I'm going to do that because if I hit divide, it might be confusing. So I'm just going to do multiply by negative one half, right? I'm flipping it. And now that takes care of something for me. What is a negative times a negative? Positive. Positive. What's half times two? One. So I have one absolute value of 3x plus 5. Now, just be careful because in an equation, what you do to one side, you must do to the other. So negative one half, right? So negative times a negative is equivalent to a? Positive. positive. Great. So my answer is going to be positive. So what's three times a half? 1.5, great. You can use 1.5 because it's an exact decimal. However, you could also leave that as a fraction, which is also known as three halves. Yes? Okay, unfortunately, now this is where all of that work we did there, we can't just keep going. We got rid of those two things to create our cases. And which cases do we have? Case one, case two, otherwise known as positive case, negative case, right? So you have case one. Case one will claim that the middle value, okay, in between the absolute value bars is going to be a positive number. Well, great. We already know that absolute value already claiming is to equal what? A positive value of 
Three halves, that's good. So we're just going to claim that 3x plus 5 indeed does make the positive value of 3 halves that we're claiming it to make. Yes? Good. The second case, the second case, we're calling it case 2. What does that value end up having to be? Negative, because the absolute value bar could have an expression that is negative. However, mathematically, what does a calculator do when you type a negative in between an absolute value bar? What does it do to that number? It multiplies it by negative 1. It's going to make it positive. How does it make it positive? It says, hey, that value, multiply it by negative 1. So take 3, uh, oops, sorry. So take your uh, 3x, not negative. So take your 3x plus 5, multiply it by negative 1, and the outcome will still become a positive number. It will still become positive 3 halves, okay? Got that? So... This idea is like an idea in science called hypotheses, right? The first test is we are hypothesizing that 3x plus 5 already is positive, yes? And then the second case, we are hypothesizing that it is negative. However, if something is negative to become positive, it must be multiplied by negative one, negative one which is why we place the negative one in front. All right, so now it's just a matter of solving, right? This is the kind of the main part of that review of this before your test. So now what do we do? Step one is solving these two equations. So what's the first step I'm going to take? What's the first thing I do? First operation to undo this, to isolate x. Minus five. Minus five, right? So the case one, step one, so we'll just isolate this one. Case one is simply to subtract five, right? And then I do, I'll just do it in a different color too. All right, so we do subtract five, subtract five. Awesome. So I'm left with what? So what does positive 5, negative 5 make? Zero. Zero. Good. So we cross it off. So I'm now left with this value of 3x. Now, what is 3 halves minus 5? So again, did you get a calculator yet? Because if you, at this level you're struggling with fractions, you need a calculator. You know how to plug it into. Okay. I will, again, gladly help you learn the process by hand. But at this point, we need to be plugging into a calculator if you don't know how to. I am recommending to you the TI-36X Pro because it's, it's literally, it's like very user friendly. Okay? So, what do you get when you plug it in? You get, right, you get negative 7 over 2. Now, last step is, at this point, I am not a fan of division. I will use multiplication by the reciprocal because one of my numbers is a fraction. Right? But... If you have a calculator, you technically can use the division button now if you have one that's user-friendly, yes? Because what would you do with this, this value of x? What would you do with it now? Divide it, right? You could divide. Now, Mr. Minger does not like the idea of division, right? I like the idea of multiplying by a reciprocal here. And the reason for it, okay, is because I'm used to the, I'm old school. I'm used to doing this by hand, right? And this side over here, this number right here is a fraction, yes? Negative 7 halves, that's a fraction. I, I don't divide fractions by numbers ever. If I have fractions and I know my operation is division, I go old school, third, fifth grade, and I just do multiply by reciprocal because that's what they teach you. They teach you in middle or elementary school, keep, change, flip, right? So I'm jumping right to change, flip. Got it? That's what I'm doing. So I'm jumping right to this. This 3 becomes change it to multiplication. So instead of thinking division, I'm thinking change, multiply, and then I'm going flip, and I'm going, instead of 1, 3, I'm going 1 over 3, 1 over 3, that's, ex that's what I'm doing here. So I get x is equivalent to, now Mr. Minger can do this in his head, is negative 7, 6, correct? I'm okay with that. Now, Mr. Minger, you told me that this was the positive case, right? Awesome. My answer is negative, right? It's a little bit confusing. However, what you need to know is if you take this value, it is okay that that number is negative. That number is allowed to be negative. What I'm saying to you is that if you take this value for x and you plug it back into the original expression, so if you take this value and plug it back in up here, right, you can see that the outcome and what it's going to be. So 3 times negative 7 over 6 plus 5. 3 times negative 7 over 2 ends up being 
Anybody know it? Yeah, three halves. Okay. It ends up being 21 over 2. Yes, which is 3.5. So this is negative 3.5. If you take negative 3.5 and you add to 5 to it, what does the answer turn into? A positive 1.5. And 1.5 does equal 3 halves. Yes? So, can the value of x be negative? Yes, the value you're substituting in can be negative. What I'm just claiming to you is that the output when plugged back in will be the positive number. Yes? Everyone got that? All right, so then we go to case two. So this answer does work. It indeed does make it. Yes? All right, so now we go over to case two, and it's a negative case. So now, first step is what? What do you want to do here? What do you want to do? You could do distributive property, correct? Absolutely. Okay, so if you want to do distributive property, no problem. Mr. Menger doesn't do that, I would do what? Divide. Yeah, I would just divide everything by negative one right off the get-go, yes? Or, instead of divided by negative one, ironically, what is the reciprocal of one? One. Case one again? Yeah. Okay, so what is the reciprocal of one? Oh, wait, hold up. Ooh. Sorry. Hey, oh, let's put it back in order. Okay. Hey, oh. Oh, you did all that just a <laughs> Okay. So, what is the re so I'm just giving you options here, right? There are three options to start this problem. Option one is distributive property. If you feel comfortable doing that, then do it. There's nothing wrong with that. Option two is divide, right? Option three is going to be multiply by the reciprocal. And what's the reciprocal of one? one? Right, one. So inevitably, negative one times negative one makes one, right? We'll take care of it. So negative one's nice because you literally multiply it by itself and it makes it go away. Yes? So you can do any one. What do you want me to do? How do you want me to demonstrate this? What would you like? What would you do? Like right now you got a test coming up. So don't try to change your world. What would you do? You would distribute? All right, then let's distribute. So we'll distribute it. Okay, so you distribute. What do I carry to when I distribute? Yeah, negative 3x minus 5 equals 3. Abs, brilliant. What do I do now? Add yeah, add five. We use what property is this called right now when I put a plus five there? Additive. Yeah, it's the additive inverse. Why am I utilizing the additive inverse property? To get to zero. Now, when I add five, when I use the additive inverse property, correct? When I add five to one side, what must I do? Correct. Because this is called now the addition property of equality. Okay. So negative 3x is equivalent to what is 3 halves plus 5? And for those of you, if you want to know how I do this in my head really quick, I think of a number divided by 2 that makes 5. 10. So I write this as 10 over 2, yes? So what is 3 halves plus, instead of saying 5, I say what is 3 halves plus 10 over 2? And the answer is 13 over 2, yes? So that's how I do it in my head, all right? And then lastly... All right, I go like such, and I say, okay, my step now is to do what? Divide. You can divide by negative three, right? If you're going to use a calculator, go ahead. You can write divide. Mr. Minger really isn't going to like seeing, right? Speaking of the third person today, I'm really not going to like seeing a fraction divided by a number. Like, it's just the pure mathematician in me doesn't like seeing it. So it's, it's something I have to learn to overcome, I guess. I don't know. But Mr. Minger will, uh, third person again, right? will multiply by the reciprocal here. And the reason I'll do it is because it's, it's easier. It's inevitably, at the end of the day, easier to multiply than it is to divide, right? Think about when you learn division. How do you learn division? By knowing your multiples, right? So my last step here will be negative 13 over six, and then I'll just simply ask myself, can I reduce? And the answer is no. Oh my goodness, look at that. Both of my x values end up being what? negative. Is that okay? Yeah. Yes. The thing about it is when I plug this negative back in, right? What I'm saying to you is when I plug this negative back in, what is it inevitably going to make? Positive. No, it's not going to make a positive. This one is going to reduce down to negative, negative three halves. And when you take the absolute value of negative three halves, you end up with positive, right? That's the idea of the negative case. I'm figuring out for which value of x do I need to plug in to make the value of negative, negative three halves up here, Wait, okay? What is the fraction? Yeah. What do you mean, what is the fraction? Oh, you can't read it. It's negative 13 over 6. Okay. 
Okay, and that's your review on absolute value. Does everybody understand absolute value has two cases. If there are operations outside, you treat it as if it were a variable and you do a two-step reduce, yes? Or a two-step, sorry, undoing, inverse operation problem, right? Okay, and that's it. Questions? Questions at all for me. All right, so that's